my BFs, my best friends, black foxes. Once again, the Negro Awakening has gifted us with a gift from the 1920s and 30s, Nella Larson's book, Quicksand. And before we unpack this book, I want you just to take a deep breath, inhaling and exhaling. And I want you to think about your experience in reading this book. And then I'm going to ask you to give me one word. Joyce, just one word, okay? Now you know that's gonna be hard. I know, but just one right. word that reflects your impression, your feelings, your assessment of this book, Quicksand. Who wants to go first? I will. Okay. Spain. Spain. Colorism. Ooh. Joyce. Repressed sexuality. That's, That's two, two words. words. That's two words. Pick your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah. Confusion. Ah. Janice. Stuck. Stuck. Okay, and my word is significant. Why stuck? At times in her life, she didn't seem like she could get out of her own way. She always ended up in the same place. Quagmire couldn't move forward. And at the end, that's what she ended up being, mm -hmm. stuck. Mm -hmm. Stuck. Mm -hmm. How about you, Valencia? Colorism. Well, you know, this whole notion of light is good and dark is evil, you know, plays out in the book, and it, and it, but it also plays out in our society. Not as much now as it did back then, mm -hmm. or some may argue mm -hmm. differently, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem to be an issue that we as black folks just can't get past. And I, I find that disheartening. Is it just us? Can we not get past well, it no. or can society not get past well, it? Exactly. Yeah. We, both. Uh, well, both. Okay. Right. Because okay. of it's not just the, in, the, because of the uh, influence that society has on us and how the larger society has shaped not only how they see us, but how we see us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joyce, you wanted to add to that? Well, I want to talk about the issue that you just raised about not being able to get past colorism. Here was Helga Crane, half white, half black, not knowing where she stood, but looking like and being a black woman who never seemed to be able to let loose. She was stuck in the mores of a society that said women behaved a certain way. She was fiercely intelligent. She was, based on what we've read, very, very beautiful, and yet she never seemed to be able to release anything until the end. Release to, until the end? I, I'm not following you with that. Well, until she um, goes into the church and wiles out, because that's what she did oh, when okay. she got I, I, I was thinking about the <laughs> end was when she was settled in the Deep South uh, on yeah, a farm, uh, overwhelmed with children. Out, and suddenly, for the first time, she feels that release, that joy, mm -hmm. and that she never felt before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deborah, confusion. I mean, here's a woman who, um, in an attempt to define herself, had everybody else defining her. Was she strong enough to really hold on to what she thought she was? Or did she just keep changing? Mm. Okay. That's a state of confusion. That's a state of confusion. Certainly. Okay. Now, Debbie. Yes. <laughs> I want to hear this too. I tell you, I immediately thought of my experience as an African-American woman living in Spain because Helga went to Europe hoping to escape mm -hmm. from the narrow definitions and the narrow, well, really, definitions that the larger society places upon people of color, particularly African Americans. And you're hoping that if you leave this continent and go someplace else where race, quote unquote, will not matter, you can just be all of your human self. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen for her. She was seen as an oddity, as exotic. And when I was in Spain as a graduate student, I was seen the same way, as this oddity, this exotic person who represented over 7 million, at least, mm -hmm. African Americans in the United States. So immediately I thought, wow, I have had that experience where I think I'm going someplace where I will be judged on the content of my character <laughs> in lofty terms, and yeah. instead I'm some exotic creature. Mm -hmm. 
That's interesting but to me, you because knew, I mean, you knew who Spain you were. Shared, yeah. I mean, Spain is the part Moors, of the globe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. one would think. It's part of a global community. It is not one cut off. It is one that has explored. It has been an exploiter of other places. So I'm, I'm surprised to, to hear that. Well, if you go there as a tourist, it's one thing. But if you go there and you live there, as I did, among people who are not all from Madrid or Barcelona, mm. who mm. are from tiny provinces, who have never seen, at least at that time, obviously I'm not talking about today, but it's still largely true mm -hmm. in the smaller provinces, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a different kind. Oh, I had a different but, kind but of experience. But you didn't go there seeking your identity. No. You already knew who you were. No, Helga but I me. was treated that way as though I was an oddity and an exotic person. I can remember people walking down the street actually stopping me. One man picked me up and spun me around. What now, happened I was, here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that happen to and you. Very well could happen here, couldn't it? That's interesting right. because my, my grandmother, as an RN in New York City uh -huh. at one of the major hospitals, had the experience of having a German, and don't tell me Germans didn't, hadn't seen black folk because they had, mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. up to ask her, if it rubbed Does off. Does it rub off? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, I guess I'm just flummoxed. Well, I can, I can certainly notion. relate to that. Yeah. I, I lived in Argentina at one time. Mm -hmm. And as you know, especially um, during that period, I think the only people of color in Argentina were Indians, about mm -hmm. 2%. Mm -hmm. And like you, when I was in Argentina, there was a sense of freedom that I experienced because. I was not marred with the politics or the woes and worries of being an American living in the United States. Interestingly enough, though, everyone thought I was from Brazil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were stunned to find out that I was Norte Americana mm -hmm. from North American. And like you, I found myself on TV shows, you know, being this exotic, one of a kind. True, I had a big 10 inch oh, afro, oh, that's that's <laughs> you know, that's during different. the time. But that's yes, for that on. very same reason. I remember um, being in Cordoba and um, a lot of traffic. And a taxi stopped, and this man got out of the taxi and started yelling. And I turned around, and it was a brown-faced man mm -hmm. who was from Nigeria. But yes. he was just so happy, happy to, to see, see one of color. See but I can certainly yeah. see what you're saying. Instead of just being, again, exactly. another person. And that's where I, I find Helga has some, some issues. Because I've traveled in Europe, and you are treated differently. People are excited. You create a sensation wherever you go. I didn't find that offensive nor did I find it breaking of my spirit. But Helga, no matter where that woman went, because she was so repressed, no matter where she went, she could never find that release. No matter what people said to her, I mean, she went to see her aunt and uncle. They put her in all of these clothes, parade her around. She let herself be paraded around well, yeah, like some did. kind of pet. Mm -hmm. And then she gets upset about that. Yeah. She's at a black school. Mm -hmm. And she's so unhappy with the black folks that no matter where Helga went, mm -hmm. Helga had problems. Mm -hmm. Because she was suppressed until she went the to great that release. church and she got <laughs> had a cathartic shouting, experience. Had a cathartic yes. experience, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden she found her soul. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's talk about girlfriend Helga Crane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now she blamed a lot of her life on being of mixed race heritage. But Joyce, I think that you have really entered the territory about what was really, really troubling her. Do you ever think it's possible to transcend race? Do you ever think that it's possible to, whether you're black or white, mm -hmm. does it really matter? Yes. What are your thoughts about it? Absolutely. And I'll tell you where it matters less. When you're on Wall Street, the only color that matters is green. Right. Okay. And if you don't advance the company's agenda, move that business forward and generate revenue, they don't give a hoot what color you are. Mm -hmm. Out the door you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But green. of course, the era that Helga lived in, she never made it to Wall Street because there were no other women on Wall Street anyway. Right. Exactly. Right. And she could never transcend race because she was so torn, not knowing whether she was fish or foul. And so she was in search of that. And she met many men who were interested in her, but she could never hold a relationship. She could never stay in one place because Helga was repressed. If you have a problem everywhere you go, Mama told me, yeah. you need to look at yourself. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you exactly must right. be part, if not all of the problem. Mm -hmm. But to Deborah's point, Helga didn't have any girlfriends. And I remember something you once told me, Joyce, mm -hmm. and said to your niece, one of your nieces, that if you don't have any girlfriends, you do have to start looking at yourself. <laughs> That's right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of you are very accomplished women. 
you walk in and among a lot of different people, among diverse populations, uh, in different areas, you work in different arenas. Have you ever felt like the other? I've been treated that way, but I never chose to see okay. myself as an outsider. Okay. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I lived in, in England um, for a year. And while there is a, certainly that is a global community. Oh, yeah. if, there, if there is one other than New York, that is one. And people will, can choose to see you that way, but it's all about how, what you bring to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't see yourself that way, mm -hmm. it kind of diffuses it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that I have, and I think um, sometimes it's by choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, because frankly, there's just some folks in my life that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Oh, but you have okay. to. And yeah. So, oh, yeah. True. so true. Yeah. And so I think the answer to your question is yes. Mm -hmm. But was that um, by design? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when it's by design, I don't think that it's a liability. I think it's an asset. When it's not by my design, then I think it's a liability. And so, um, yeah, because, you know, sometimes I just want to do what I have to do and leave because no, exactly. I travel in so many different circles that I don't feel the need to create another one. Um, but sometimes what I do takes me into circles that, you know, I have to do what I have to do. And so, yeah, I feel like the other, but that is because that's what Valencia wants and not what, yeah. because the environment created that for Valencia. Mm -hmm. And what a lesson for others to be able to live in this life, to walk in various circles and feel so self-actualized, experience such a good self sense of self-esteem that you don't feel like the other or the only one. Mm -hmm. I know that I attribute much of that to the way that I was raised. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, to my mother Absolutely. and my father, to the five generations of African-American women, women, to always feel confident mm -hmm. wherever you are. I was at a conference recently, and I was so glad to see one of my colleagues there from England. And um, we were having a jolly old time over a glass of wine, and finally she turned to me and she said, Oddity. Do you realize you're the only black person here at the conference? Really? Did she say that? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Oh, did now, she really? Yes, yes, she did. And I thought, hmm, no, no, because no, never, never. I'm never going to feel like other. Now, I could have had a comeback and said, do you realize you're the only one here with an English accent? Mm -hmm. But I did not. Mm -hmm. What do you that attribute you that to? Absolutely. That you have that such a strong constitution, a strong sense of self-esteem mm -hmm. that you never feel like the outsider. I was on a cruise with... Um, my then husband, who was a former professional football player, and a blonde came up to me and said, are you with him? I said, yes, I am. She says, are you related? I said, well, I'm his wife. <laughs> she says, but you're not white. And I said, well, what do you mean? She says, well, most athletes marry white women. Now, I could have had one of two reactions, I, well, several, but I could have been really angry and said something really snippy, but I thought, oh, well, here's yet another teaching moment. Okay. Mm, you're Let me. Saint. Here's oh. yet another teaching moment. A professor. And what I, I am yes, a professor. Yes, I am. All kinds of teaching So right. I said, that's true. So I said, well, you know, if you look around you, just, just tell me what you see. Do you see any other African-American women? She looked around and she said, as a matter of fact, I don't. And I said, now, when an athlete, especially one in the limelight, makes a decision to marry a black woman, it is a decision because mm -hmm. typically the hangers on, the fans, the women who are trailing them are white. She says, That's you know, groupies. you're right. They are groupies. I'm not a groupie. Right. I'm a woman that he decided to marry and he decided to marry within his race. Mm -hmm. She said, I never thought about it that way. But let's do a quick fast forward to the end. Where is she emotionally? and physically by the end of the book. I, I just felt at the end with all these children and how the church women came to support her, the women in town ended up taking care of her husband for a while yeah, and children. the children. Right. And I just thought it was an amazing turnaround for her, realizing she could not get out of her own way. And, and she, she was stuck. And she was stuck. She was stuck, caught in quicksand. Caught. Isn't that what happens when you marry on the rebound? Because <laughs> that's what she did. <laughs> But she was in a state, actually, when she met him. Remember, she was actually going through. She was right. 
totally, totally disoriented. Mm -hmm. And she went into a state and <laughs> yeah. into kind of a fit. <laughs> she, she was got absorbed in the moment. She was wild no that. matter where she, she was, was. Regardless, she regardless of the community, she was. regardless of the people, mm -hmm. she was just never, never satisfied. How do you wake up in the morning like that? But a lot of people wake up like that. I think they were just stuck. Mm -hmm. just and they stuck. didn't have the drugs they have today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's one solution. <laughs> right. Today they will right. Prozac them or whatever it is they take. So. Oh, right, that's exactly right. True. That's exactly right. Nor did she have a circle of friends. That's right. Nor did like she have a first. Right. Okay, right. first. The original foremost. Prozac is your exactly. circle of friends. Exactly. Right. I you like know. that. You're all in my Prozac. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I often refer to you as my bomb in Gilead, but you know what? Thank you. You do. You do. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'll go with the bomb in Gilead. The bomb in Gilead. Yes, that's a lot more healing. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was thank wonderful, you. I think.